Hi everybody, here's Christian and this is uh, Lazy Deaths, Lazy Deaths Academy. And uh, we are still doing our Pico 8 tutorial, we are doing our breakout clone. So, um, where do I want to start? Yeah, so we have been working... Let's load. <laughs> um, so we've been working on um, adding some juiciness stuff. And last time around we did um, a, a blinking of a text. And so I'm today I wanted to like um, expand upon this a little bit and I also wanted to add this effect where the start screen fades out. It fades out when uh, when you when you press a button because this might be effect, an effect that we maybe use later on some, somewhere. Um, so maybe let's start with that effect. Uh, and then we're gonna we're gonna see how we can add the blinking maybe to some other elements as well. Um, just to run the game, so, so we we see it like the um, the text is pulsating when I press. I'm gonna get like a like a sound effect and like a rapid pulsating, and it would be nice if this when it's rapidly pulsating if it would fade out. That would be pretty nice. And maybe this fades in. I don't know. Let's be, depends on, on how I feel. So how are we going to do this? Well. To be perfectly honest, I can't do this uh, from scratch. <laughs> I don't know how to do this. Um, well, I know how to do this, but um, it will take a lot of time. So I'm gonna use my good old friend. Oh, I, I, there we go, <laughs> Google. <laughs> right, so where I'm gonna go is, uh, I didn't actually capture the, the task bar, whatever. Um, Lexalawful. Uh, and so the, the cool thing about the creators of Pico 8 is that they have a, like a um, discussion forum and you, so you can go there. And um, something I wanted to show you, this is part of the tutorial, don't, don't worry, worry about that. So what, um, part of the tutorial is the also learning how to steal code from other people. Not steal, uh, how to borrow code from other people. And that's something that's really great about Pico 8. You can always look at how things are created. You can always look in the code of other people's uh, games. So you can check out what they're doing and, and how they're doing it. And so we can learn from other people's, um, other people's achievements. So there is a category here in the forums called workshop. And this is usually a good place to ask questions if you don't know how to do something or where people sometimes post tutorials. And as you can see, there it is, Chrisman. This is my name. <laughs> I've been very active in this forum. Um, and I posted a couple of sample codes. And so I'm going to actually take some code I've already written, uh, which I also stole from other other person. So this is um, this is a really nice program, which is just, um, it shows how screen shake works, which we already implemented. Uh, but it also shows how um, how fading work, how, how we can make the screen fade. And so something that's, that's really nice here is when I press the, the button, it, is, it fades, uh, it shakes. But also I, I, I get um, this, this image showing up, which is really nice and cute and I love it. Um, so how do they do, do this? And so you can, some, there's two ways of accessing this code. If you want to see like well, what's happening here, you can click down here on code and then it shows you like right here on the screen. But you can also download the cart, the entire cart. Uh, this will be, if you do this, this this is just a picture and you're like, where, where's the card? Where, I, I want a code. Um, this picture is actually code. So if you um, if you save it, oh, it's German, it's save as. Uh, if you save it in your um, Pico 8 folder, I'm, I'm going to do it. Um, oh my god. Okay, so where is, where is the Pico 8 folder? Let, let me look this real quick. Quick, quick folder. I'm gonna do is just we have the time we have all the time in the world so yeah uh, oh gosh this is this is complicated anyway we're gonna go into cards and um, yeah we're gonna save it here <clears throat> all right all right so now I saved as three four one three five that's a very memorable number uh, and so if I turn this off and if you're now in the Pico 8 folder uh, if we're gonna go here we're gonna go load load Three, four, one, three, five. See, it loaded the PNG. It loaded the actual image file because that's something that's really neat about Pico 8. It saves the um, the actual games in um, image files. And there is apparently some trick in which which, which you can use to save uh, additional information in a PNG, and that's what Pico 8 is using. And you can see here is my code that I wrote previously. It's nice. So I, as you can see, I wrote a lot of commentary to explain exactly how things are working. Um, but basically what I want to do is I want to do this. I want to copy this entire fade pal is, is, the, is the function we want to copy. 
and then we're going to load hero one. And then I'm going to put it in our first tab here in the in the in a tab with a with a fading uh, with a with a juiciness fading. So I'm going to remove the commentary uh, as I go through it and explain to you how this works. So this function sets the color palette so everything you draw afterwards will appear darker. It accepts a number from 0 to 1. 0 means normal, 1 is completely black. This function has been adapted from the GLP P8 demo. Yeah, so um, GLP is like this um, jump and run that comes with Pico 8. If you, um, if you type in install demos, then, you know, if you go help, um there is install underscore demos there it is right so if you type install underscore demos um you will um it will unpack install some random some default um game cards and there's going to be gel pp8 in there which is a really great platformer and that had some fading code and i just was like huh that was actually a really cool effect how does this work so i actually went into the code and checked out how this works and i, I basically adapted this code I'm gonna uh, just a reminder. <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm gonna put the zero means normal ones completely back in here. Okay, so first we take our argument and turn it into a percentage number from zero to one hundred. Also making sure it's not out of bounds, um, which is a bit weird because um, we're already accepting zero from why why am I not just accepting from zero to one hundred? Uh, I'm gonna keep it from, uh, like this. I'm not gonna change anything. So so you know. Um, I'm just going to delete this. Um, we are going to create some variables here. And so here comes the core concept of how we're doing this. So basically you can do, uh, in Pico 8, you can do, a, um, we had the palette fun function to change the color of something. Uh, I believe we had this when we were changing the backgrounds. We had the transparent palette, TPAL. We were, wanted to have, to have this, this cream color. We wanted to turn this trans transparent. So we had to de de um, define that a different color will be turned transparent. But there is also a different function called pal palette, which basically takes a color and changes it to a different color. So I could technically, like if there were no letters on here, I could change all of the colors of these guys into a different color. I could turn all the white into red, for example. Um, and there's two ways of doing this. There is one way of that changes that every image that you draw afterwards will have the changes applied to them. Um, but you can also do it so that everything that is already on the screen will change into this. Oops, I didn't want to bump the microphone, sorry. Um, the way we do using this here is we're going to want to, of course, change everything that is drawn afterwards will have different colors. Like th the colors will mean something else. So what I mean is that like you, you have here like color 11, 15, whatever, the numbers are associated with colors. You can sw swap the colors around. So for example, color 10 won't be yellow like, like this, instead it might be this guy or, or red or whatever. So that's what it does. That's what the palette color does. And so how are we going to do fading with that? Um, so the idea is that we have this array. And this array is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 entries. Right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15. Yeah, of course, 15, from 1 to 15. So it goes through all of the colors and changes colors. Um, so basically, the color number 15 becomes number 14 because it um, basically it's, it's kind of like a lookup table that shows you which color changes to which when it gets one darker. So a color 1 changes to color 0. Color 2 changes to 1. Color 3 changes to 1. Color 2 changes uh, color four changes to two and so forth and color 15 changes to 14 um, and then of course then it becomes 14 and that changes to 13 and that changes to one uh, and it's kind of like a table that the guy who made Jelpy, which i think is, is um what's his name i forgot the nickname uh, the guy who made pico 8 um he kind of derived this kind of like cascade kind of like you know where how does the, the bright green probably will turn in this in this green and that will probably turn and maybe into a gray or immediately into black you know it, there's like a cascade going on okay so now that we have this array this lookup table for how to make a color one darker 
what we do now is we're going through all of the colors. We are um, we are saving the color into into a special variable. Then there is like some magical math going on, and as I can um, I ex explain this, this is a messy formula and it's not exact science. I've been messing around myself with this formula, but it was already pretty messy when I came in here. And I'm not exactly sure how this formula works. I'm sorry, I really don't know. This is, this is a bit confusing. Um, but basically, um, this calculates how many times we want to go through this uh, through this um, through this table because all this table does is how to the color make the color one darker, one darker. It doesn't say to you how to make it comp you know how to make it fifty percent darker. It's just like one step. What would be the next step if you want to make it a little bit darker? Um, so, um, so th what this formula does is, as you can say, it, it it's, uh, accepts um, J, which is our current, current color, um, but also accepts P, and P we have uh, devised here, so this is how dark it should get. So um, it's, uh, the P influences how, how many times we want to uh, go through this process. But how many times means, you know, the 15 becomes the 14. And if, so if the 15 becomes the 14, we, went, go, we go one step darker. But if the 15 becomes 14 and then the 14 becomes 13, that's two steps. The same color, it's, we start out with 15 and we landed at 13. We went through two times through this lookup table. And that's Kmax. So which is basically what this formula does is it goes, it kind of figures out how many times we want to go um, through this lookup table, how many times, how many steps down we want to go with each color. And uh, then after after we figure out what Kmax does, we actually do it. We actually go through this, we, we're going to go from 1 to Kmax, and we're going to multiple times look up the colors, and then we're going to take the result of the lookup and feed it back into the lookup if their K is more than 1. So finally, call is going to be the new color that J will turn into. J is, you know, the, the, the loop. So we turn each of the 15 colors into a new color that we derive through a very complicated process. <laughs> that's, that's, that's basically what, what we want to uh, we want to do. I delete some of the comments so it's not get not doesn't get too complicated. Um, so, because, um, yeah, I also want to delete this. Um, I don't want the, this function to be become too long, so we can still scroll past, but we went through the code a little bit. Um, again, it's, um, if you have any questions on how this works, let me know. Uh, some of this, you know, again, this Kmax is probably the most complicated thing because I don't know exactly how I derived this. I was kind of messing around with numbers. There were some numbers already there, which I didn't know how they, they appeared. So I tried some other numbers. And that's how I arrived at this. So how are we going to apply this? Well, first of all, I want to do something else. <laughs> so uh, last episode, I was looking around a lot for my update function and for my um, for, for my update function. So what I want to do is now I want to create a new new um, two new tabs for my update and draw function so I can find them easier. So this is update functions and this will, will be our main update function and but also update the start this is the good one this is the one that we had last time around and what I'm kind of update next level is not an update function. Let me just jump to the function reset pills. Level finish serve ball new ball copy ball set animal game over level over nope but here update game over and update level over and update game. Update game is big. There is an update ball function but I'm not going to copy it over. I'm going to keep it here. Maybe uh, let's see how I feel about this. If I really need to find it, maybe I will copy it. Over. Um, because it's technically not an update function, it's, it's, I don't know, maybe I should copy, I will copy it over, whatever, I copy it over. All right, and then I'm gonna here, I'm gonna put a draw functions. Uh, 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 uh. 
Hit bricks, spawn pill, checks explosion, bricks, explode bricks, draw, there we go. Draw star, draw, level level, draw game, and everything else. Okay. So, if you do this, we realize something interesting. We did the screen shake in a draw function previously. I actually want to maybe put it in the in the update function. I think that's, that seems my more reasonable idea because we don't want maybe the screen shaking to get, to have a different speed depending on the frame rate. So we're gonna do the do blink and do shake together in the update function, uh, update 60. Doesn't, doesn't change a lot, actually. Doesn't change anything, probably. <laughs> okay, so how are we going to do the fading now? How, what does it do with the fading? So here is where the fading happens. Actually, by the way, this do blink, I don't like the do blink. I don't like how we are. This the way I, the reason I did this is, you, uh, you usually you avoid a lot of mistakes when you don't change important variables, if you don't have to then change them, uh, because maybe sometimes you know you escape some function or you change some mode and you never like change the variable back so to reset it the variable to what it's supposed to be. So a variable like the speed of the blinking is something you maybe no, don't really want to fumble around with. Uh, if it's supposed to change for a moment and then change back after 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 a while, because maybe you will never change it back, and then there's going to be there's going to be problems. So I opted to just execute a number the do blink function a number of times to speed up the blinking, uh, because that doesn't change any variables. Um, but now I don't like I don't really like the, the the messy code here. I don't like that there's so many of these things here. So I will actually mess around with a with a um, with a uh, with a blinking function, with a blinking speed. So this is blink speed here. And so what I want to do is I want to set it when I press, I want to set it to one. I'm not going to do an extra do blink. Oops. Okay. And here I'm going to set it to uh, to eight again. Um, oh no, <laughs> this is bad. Uh, so in tab one at line thirty six, there's an unclosed unclosed function. This is tab one at line thirty six. Uh, this is here. We did not end the do blink. This seems fine. Oh, it's a fading thing. Okay, <clears throat> did I did I um, do something wrong? Hmm. Oh, I didn't I didn't copy the end. There we go. Okay, that seems fine. Good. So everything works. We now separate everything into into different tabs. Um, so what are we going to do now? So now that do we cleaned up a little bit this this update function? Uh, where is it? Do blink? Uh, no, this this update function. So we can think about how to do the fading. Mm. How are we going to do? It? So this accepts. Let me think about this real quick. So the fade poll accepts a perk. Um, let us just do a new variable called fade, fade perk. And we're going to set it to, so what did we say? Uh, one is completely dark, right? So let's set it to zero. And then um, here's the countdown happening. Uh, when we start the game, we're gonna reset the fade perk to zero, and here we now we're gonna go like fade perk equals uh, plus equals zero point zero five or something. Let's see how this will work. Oh yeah, and of course, um, where is it? Um, fade Paul, right? So we're going to execute the fading function uh, before we draw anything 
here in draw function. This is now the draw function. This has to be going in a draw function. Fade Paul, uh, fade perk. Um, but just maybe to save a little bit on on the performance, um, I want to do uh, if fade uh, fade perk is not equal zero. Oh wait a minute, that's the way it works differently. Uh, fade perk. How does how how is not working in in Pico eight? Uh, I forgot. Do you guys remember? Hey, how does not work? Not equal. Ah, yeah, it's a tilde. So it fade perk tilde. Is that tilde? That's tilde. Uh, tilde equals zero. So if the fade perk is something else than zero, then then we do the fading. If it's zero, then it's we're not fading in at all. So so why why fading? Fade this. Let's see if this works. It worked. Ah, but now the screen is black. D does it still exist? Yeah, it exists. Okay, we didn't reset it for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, I thought I reset it. Yeah, here, yeah, fade perk equals zero. What, what's, the, what's the matter? Hmm, I know what, what maybe the problem is. Um, so if you run pal without the the brackets, without anything in the brackets, it will reset the palette uh, to the, the default. So we, I think we're not resetting the palette. Yeah, now it works. <clears throat> Something I don't like about this current setup uh, so um, maybe to explain what the problem was. So we changed the palette to get darker and darker and darker, uh, but there was no way to change it back again. So even if we didn't execute this function, it remembered the palette from the last frame. So it was constantly dark. Okay. Something I don't like about this is um, it's still a bit fast, the fading. Maybe we can make it a bit slower. Now it's a bit too slow. So now the problem is that we have to actually sync the, the fading to the countdown. But what if we could like bind them together, right? That's, that might be a good idea. So we know that the starting countdown is 80. So maybe we can actually, um, maybe actually we make a, a function here. So 80 minus star countdown. That will means that we, now we have a number that um, starts with 80 and ends with no, it starts with zero and ends with 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 eighty, and then we're gonna divide this by eighty. And now, um, actually, fading is linked to how much, uh, how far the pro, um, the count on has progressed. So now it it's it's uh, it's uh, it seems more. Like the speed it seems seems right now, and now we can actually uh, control it when we uh, we set it to like say uh, to be twice as long. Oh yeah, right. See. So now we can change the speed of um, of fading and uh, the speed of the wait time after you press the button, and then the fading will adjust accordingly. I want to set it back to 80. I think 80 sounded fine. See, it's it's fast enough, but you still see uh, have a, like a little little bit of a uh, there's like a nice effect going on. 
Cool. Um, so there's one more thing. So look at the following. That's something. There is something that I didn't like. So let's let's lose the game a couple of times. Now watch this. So I don't like it. I don't like how game over sh shook. But nothing else shook. That that wasn't good. I don't. I didn't like this. So what I want to do now is I want to um, to for the game to wait like maybe again eighty frames or something, and then the game over to appear after the shaking is over. Um, usually you want you don't want this to happen after every life. You don't want to have like a pause after you lose a life. You want the game to continue immediately. That's kind of like a good trick. Um, because then if you have to wait, like in Super Mario Brothers does this, it's really bad. Like if you die, it's like, du -du 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 -du. you know, there's like this little song. And that kind of like stops your game flow. You kind of, especially if there's then a screen appearing, reminding you which level you're on and stuff like that. That kind of like is, is, um, can stop your game flow. And something that... Um, uh, some games do really well, something like uh, Super Meat Boy, is they start you back immediately, so you get like this this immediate um, opportunity to do better. And I like that, and I, so I want don't want the break to happen when you lose a life. Uh, but I do want maybe a break to happen when you are completely game over. So we're gonna, I'm suggesting we're gonna do something similar we did with the start screen, where um, there's going to be a start countdown, there's going to be game over countdown. Gover. Let's call it Gover countdown. Um, and so when we go game over, we instead we start the countdown instead of instead of uh, instead of just oh god, <laughs> I always uh, switch the wrong guys here. So when we go game over, let's see. <clears throat> so right now I start this game over, but maybe I want to go like go over countdown um, equals 60. Let's go. Let's let's do it like this. Game over. Wait. We make a new mode, which is basically gonna run the game. Like normally, is that a good idea? Yeah, it's a good idea. It's gonna run the game normally, just gonna draw the game normally, but it won't, won't actually respond to anything. Let's try this. Um, and then there's gonna be a Gover count on happening here. All right. Okay. Right. Um, game over, wait. Mm -hmm. And then, oops. Here we have to actually put this game over, wait. Uh, we're not going to update anything. Is that a good idea? Yeah, we're doing the shake anyway, yeah. So let's try actually doing nothing, no update. No, actually, we do want to have some update. Game over, wait. Because we have to do the counter. Um, yeah. Here we're just waiting for the counter. I'm going to actually steal the code from, from here, from update start. Uh, 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 here, wait. Okay, good. So I'm gonna paste this in here now. Um, actually, we don't care about this because the game over countdown won't actually wait for. Uh, won't have a mode where it's waiting for something. It will just start a countdown. Start countdown. There is not gonna be any fading. Uh, it's not start but go over. If go over countdown equals zero, go over countdown is minus one. Um, this is an interesting. And now um, we're gonna actually use what is the game over function? 
This, wasn't it here somewhere? There we go, game over. So we're gonna take this thing from game over and we're gonna now put it in, in the update function. Maybe not the best way of doing this. It uh, feels a bit dirty when we're changing the mode within a function that is not explicitly for changing modes. Uh, but I think that's fine here. Where is it? Um, so where am I? I want to go to an update game over weight. Exactly here. Mode equals game over. Mm -hmm. One more thing, uh, the draw function. Um, so... So if there's if the game over weight is happening, L mode I hate it. Game over weight. Then now we're drawing the actual game. Because we're waiting for you know for shaking to subside, to to chill out. And then, um, and then, so to step step you through it, let's just save it and run it to see if this works. Okay, now now it comes. Yeah, see, this is good now. So what exactly happened here? What happened here? So what happened here is we created a new game mode. We had game over previously and game. Now we had like a mode in between, which is called game over weight. And it's a bit, a bit maybe a bit dirty because it's like an entire game mode, but I kind of like it. So um, when the game is in the state game over weight, it will draw the game, but it will not actually update it. Uh, instead, it will wait for a countdown timer to count down to zero. And when that countdown camera counts to zero, it will change the game mode to game over. When it will then display like this game over little little text. Okay. Um, so um, so we have like like, like in between state here. Um, and so the screen shakes and everything because we are doing the screen shake in update function. Or, or in, always we do the screen shake here. And with the game is also redrawn, like we are redrawing the game, we're updating the game. No, we're not updating it, but we're actually drawing the game, so it's like the entire screen shakes. Um, but um, but we're not responding to input. The ball is not moving, you know, and stuff like that. It's really just like the game freezes basically, and the screen shakes. Okay, good. Um, so this was a bit of, bit of a long uh, episode. Um, I really wanted to add the blinking text. Maybe we're gonna do the blinking text real quick, um, or maybe that's that's. So if you want, you can end this episode right now, and we can try to add your own blinking text. Basically, what we wanna do, or what we wanna do is we wanna uh, let me let me start the game. Start game. We're gonna set the number of lives to zero, uh, just so we can get the game over screen more more quickly. So we want, what we want to do is we want to have like the same effect that we had with the start screen, where it's like press um, X to restart. We want maybe this to slowly blink. And we want it to blink faster when we press the button or maybe more vibrant. So that would be a task for you now. You can stop this tutorial and you can try to implement it yourself. Otherwise, I will do it right now. Okay, uh, real quick, this is going to go real fast. So we're gonna go here where we do the do blink and we need to add a new sequence. This sequence is gonna be for the blinking of the of the game over. Um, now the problem is like we had green, but now it's gray, it's, but it also starts with G. So G sequence is not good. Um, R seek gray, but then red is gonna be, ugh. Let's go W sequence, it's white. Um, right, I want to go z zero actually for this one. So um, I, I want to uh, actually blink it all the way to zero. Then we're going to do the dark gray, which is one. Uh, and then we're going to do the bright gray, which is six. 
and then maybe even the white let's go through the white let's cycle through the white it's, we can change it's very simple it's in seven and then the, all the way down to six one and then that will loop back to zero okay so this is our w uh, sequence uh, and then i'm going to add some additional variables for this so we have blink um, blink g blink gi what is blinking blink frame oh yeah that's it okay um blink w let's go call it blink, blink w and blink w i and then here we're going to copy this text i'm going to be I'm, I'm being really fast right now i'm sorry uh, i'm going to change all the g's into w's because it's really that easy okay that's good now here's one more um yeah that's it yeah okay so blink w is now the color of the of the, the text in the game over screen. So when we here, we're pressing press X to restart, we can do, instead of a six, we can plug in the blink W. It's that easy. Let's, do, let's try this. See, it's working. Um, Maybe a bit slower. Maybe we're not gonna go through zero. I don't like how it goes through zero. Maybe maybe a bit. Let's try it like this. It's, it's still a bit fast. So let's just actually mess around with the blinking speed. Uh, blink speed, this guy. Um, so when we go game over, where is it? Where is it? Um, no, actually the game over is here. There we go, game over. Um, we're gonna set the blinking speed to something else. But let's set it to 16. And then when I press a button, ah, we now have to add also a countdown timer when you press a button. Um, that's something that we're gonna do later on. Um, uh, where is it? Update game over, wait, there it is. Um, here we set, reset it to eight. We, I just want to always to keep it at eight if I can. Still too, too, way too hectic. Why is it so hectic? This is crazy. All right, mm, because game, in, hmm. I'm silly, I'm a silly goose. Um, what I want to do is if I press a button at game over, that's where we want to reset it to eight. So what I don't like right now is maybe I made a mistake. All right, I go to one and not to five. Yeah, I made a mistake in the in the uh, the um, there was a dark blue that I saw there, and that's not the right one. We want to go to the five. That seems better. Yeah, this seems this seems seems a little better. So now I want to do this thing where it, when I press it will start pulsate uh, faster, and again that's that's going to be another count on variable sadly. Ah, uh, but maybe you can use actually the same the go, game over weight variable. We're going to reuse the same variable, which is a bit a bit of a cheat. Um, so this go, uh, go over countdown we're going to reuse this in the game over as well. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to actually use the same code that we had in the update start, if uh, start count only zero. Mm -hmm. 
the, uh, but it's going to be Gover Countdown. Ah! And then we're going to copy this stuff here and we're going to put it down here. And we're going to do this sound effect as well. We're not going to start the game right now. Instead, we're going to start it here. Oh, it's already here. That's good. So again, the same thing. Do you do in a cover um, game over countdown? We're fading out. Um, we're fading out. Just replacing all the start with Gover. Uh, the blinking speed. What did we set it in, in the start at one? Really fast. Um, yeah, that's good. Uh, one more thing. Uh, yeah, here we need to start the re reset the countdown. Start the countdown. So basically we took the variable gover countdown and we reused it in game over. We used it previously in game over wait to wait for, for a while until the actual game over screen appears. But now we're reusing it to wait for the game to start after you press the button. Okay, so this worked. Ah. What? Why why was it completely black? Uh, mm, I see there's a bit of a problem here. So now only the little game over screen fades out. That's a bit a bit bad. Okay, so maybe we have to have to actually change the way the way the palette function works. Uh, our fading currently works because right now we change the fading before we draw anything. But maybe we want to change actually everything. Apply everything to the screen. So how do we do this again? Let me check this real quick. Pico eight tutorial. Um, Pal statement. Okay, so it's basically just one afterwards. Um, so yeah, we're gonna <laughs> we have to have to remind people at the beginning of the of the next tutorial that we did a change here. So when we're fading here, right now what we're doing is we're changing colors before we draw them. Now we want to actually maybe do it so it changes the colors that are already on the screen. But in order to do this, um, we, so we, in order to do this, we add a third argument in our Paul function here, which changes uh, exchanges two colors or actually changes the meaning of one color to another. We change it from a, we add a third argument here that says one, and the one indicates that we actually want to apply everything on the colors that exist on the screen on the content of the screen. And so when we draw the function now, here we're fading the screen. Um, I wonder if this work. We're fading the screen um, after we've drawn everything. So let's see if this works. This works. Ha, it's good. Good, works. Uh, so see you next next. next law. I stumble over myself. See you on the next episode where we are going to, well, we're going to actually go through the remaining things that we have to do in our checklist. And then I think the next thing that we're going to do is going to be, there's a, oh, there's an arrow animation that we have to do with, but then, then, but then afterwards we're going to do particles. See you next time around guys. Bye bye.